Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Gas Magic. This is Hunter coming at you with another EDH deck tech. That's right, we are still trekking along. We are taking a look at all of these Marvel Secret Layer cards. That's right, they are the Marvel characters specific to Secret Layer. You can only buy them there on uh, November 4th, 2024. So I don't know when you're watching this video, but hopefully you guys got your hands on the ones you wanted. Uh, we are taking a look at another one. You've already seen Black Panther. You've already seen the other one, Iron Man. And now we are talking about good old-fashioned Wolverine. Before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know we appreciate doing these videos for you guys. But if you guys appreciate these videos themselves, hit that like button to let us know that you keep making them. Also, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already because like 80% of you guys aren't subscribed. And it really helps us out if you guys are subscribed as well. Stay up to date with all the content that we got coming out. But let's go ahead and get started with this awesome one. It is Wolverine. So here we go. Wolverine, best there is. One red and a green for a 2-2 legendary creature, mutant, berserker, hero. It has an ability called Unrivaled Lethality. It says double all damage Wolverine would deal. It also says at the beginning of each end step, if Wolverine dealt damage to another creature this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. It also has an ability to pay one and a green to regenerate Wolverine. Haven't seen regenerate on a card in a long time, but the flavor win right here for Wolverine is fantastic. We all know he can regenerate himself, but in case you don't remember what regenerate does, it says the next time he would be destroyed this turn. Instead, tap him, remove him from combat, and heal all damage on him. So any kind of destroy effect, any kind of damage that would just be done to Wolverine to be enough to kill him, we just say one in a green, he's fine. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I do have a giant copy of him right here in front of me. Pretty cool a little comic there we got from MagicCon Vegas. Um, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and talk about Wolverine. Best there is. Personally, this is my favorite of all of the bunch of all these. You already know I'm doing the counter thing. I'm doing the damage thing. You've seen this channel long enough. You know I'm the guy that kind of does that the most. And that's what we're doing here. I love the ability there that it's just double damage. It's not necessarily double strike, but there are ways in this deck that I have put double strike to increase that damage even more. So pretend he's a 4-2 at base power and toughness. And then every time he pumps up, we give him more counters. We're just going to be doing so much damage to our opponents. I absolutely love it. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive straight into this deck. First things first, let's talk about the entire secret layer. All of these cards are going into the deck. If you've got this secret layer, that's awesome happy for you guys so uh berserk is going into this deck it is one green for an instant that says cast the spell only before the combat damage step target creature gains trample and gets plus x plus zero until end of turn where x is its power at the beginning of the next end step destroy that creature if it attacked this turn fun fact regenerate it after and then it doesn't get destroyed so the berserk actually works really well here where we just absolutely go crazy and smash in our opponent, and they're going to be feeling that pain pretty well with Berserk. Adamantium Bonding Tank is just the Ozolith, an incredible reprint here. You already know, I love this card. It's one mana, legendary artifact that says whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, you put those counters onto the Adamantium Bonding Tank, and then at the beginning of combat on your turn, if Adamantium Bonding Tank has counters on it, you can take them and put them on a creature. I love it. Rhythm of the Wild is one red green for an enchantment. It says creature spells you control can't be countered, and non creature you control have riot, which means they enter with haste or they enter with a plus one plus one counter on it. Rite of Passage is a cool card that's coming in here. Two and a green for an enchantment. It says whenever a creature you control is dealt damage, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. So, more counters, please. Moving on to the Planeswalkers we are throwing into this deck. We are actually throwing in two, which is pretty cool. So, Domri and Archibolus is going in for one a red and a green for a legendary planeswalker it does have a starting loyalty of three it just has a static ability that says creatures you control get plus one plus zero and a plus one that says add a red or green creature spells you cast this turn can't be countered which is fantastic and a minus two that says target creature you control fights target creature you don't control so let's have wolverine start fighting some people start getting those counters we're just going to be keep growing them i love that Jessica Thrice Reborn is two and a red for a zero starting loyalty. It says it enters the battlefield with a loyalty counter on it for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game. So obviously cast your commander before you cast Jessica so it can come in with at least one uh, loyalty counter there. But it has a zero ability that says choose target creature until your next turn. If that creature would deal combat damage to one of your opponents, it deals triple that damage to that player instead. 
So we're gonna be doing double, we're gonna be doing triple. It stacks, it's gonna be fantastic. A minus X that says it deals X damage to each of the three targets. Who cares? I don't care about that part. It's all about that zero cost. Um, Jessica Thrice Reborn, really cool card here. Moving on to the creature department, we are starting off with some mana dorks. We got Delighted Halfling here for one green mana for a one, two creature halfling citizen. You can tap it for a colorless, or you can tap it at one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a legendary spell, and that spell can't be countered. Lanowar Elves, good old fashioned, one green mana for a one, one, tap it for a green. Goblin and Narcomancer is red green for a two, two creature goblin shaman. It says each spell you've cast that's red or green costs one less to cast. Keep in mind, if it's both, it still only costs reduction of just one. Moving on to some creatures that care about counters, because we are a counter-themed deck as well. So Cami of Whispered Hopes is two and a green for a 1-1 one, one creature spirit. It says if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a permanent you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are put on that permanent instead. You can also tap it to add X mana of any one color, where X is Cami of the Whispered Hopes power. Forgotten Ancient is fantastic. Three and a green for a 0-3 creature elemental. Whenever a player casts a spell, you may put a counter on Forgotten Ancient. Yeah, we're going to do that every time. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may move any number of plus one plus one counters from Forgotten Ancient onto other creatures. Just take them, just throw them on Wolverine. We're going to be doing so much damage with Wolverine. Halana and Elena Partners, two red green for a two three legendary creature human ranger. It's got first strike, it's got reach. It says at the beginning of combat on your turn, put up X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control, where X is Halana and Elena's power. That creature gains haste until end of turn. Good old Bristly Bill Spine Sower is one in a green for a 2-2 legendary creature plant druid. It has landfall, which says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It has another ability, you can pay three and two green. Double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. So I love landfall triggers and Bristly Bill is is a must include in any plus one plus one counter deck. Ornery Tumblewag, two and a green for a two two creature, a brushwag mount. It says at the beginning of combat on your turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And then whenever Ornery Brushwag attacks while saddled, double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature. Has a saddle cost of two. Vigor, three and three green for a six six creature, Elemental Incarnation. It's got trample and it says if damage would be dealt to another creature you control prevent that damage and put a plus one plus one counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way and then whenever vigor is put into a graveyard from anywhere you shuffle it back into your library uh vigor is fantastic in this deck especially since we're going to be running a little bit of fight spells with our commander so if vigor's on the field and we're fighting other things we're preventing the damage that's coming back at us getting even more counters then swinging in combat and dealing how much damage it's going to be nuts and of course, Evolution Sage is here too for two and a green for a three, two creature elf druid. It has landfall as well that says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. So anytime land enters, just tick up those counters. So let's move on to some creatures that care about the game plan. What is the game plan? The game plan is to attack and deal as much damage as possible. And all these cards kind of do that. So Dusk Shell Crawler is one and a green for a 0-3 insect. It says when it enters the battlefield, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And then each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample. Get through, get that damage. Xenagos God of Revels is three red green for a 6-5 legendary enchantment creature god. It's got indestructible and it says as long as your devotion to red and green is less than seven, Xenagos isn't a creature. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is that creature's power. Give it to Wolverine. It's gonna get nuts. Kadama of the West Tree is two and a green for a 3-3 legendary creature spirit. It's got reach and it says modified creatures you control have trample, which if you don't remember, modified creatures are equipment, auras you control, and counters. So kind of what we're trying to do. Whenever a modified creature you control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. A little extra ramping there as well. Enduring Courage is coming in, too, for two and two red for a 3-3 three, three enchantment creature Dog Glimmer. It says whenever another creature you control enters, it gets plus two, plus zero, and gains haste until end of turn. And then whenever Enduring Courage dies, if it was a creature, return to the battlefield under its owner's control. It's an enchantment now. I absolutely love this card. Give it haste. Swing it immediately. And that extra little attack bump. I love it. Carlock, Fury of Avernus, four and a red for a 5-4 legendary creature Tiefling Barbarian. 
This is whenever you attack, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap all attacking creatures. They gain first strike until end of turn. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Kedis, Emberclaw Familiar. It's really important in this deck, and I'll tell you why. It's the ability. That's why. One in a red for a 1-1 one, one legendary creature elemental lizard. This is whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent. It deals that much damage to each opponent. So if we're hitting one of our opponents for double damage, whatever Wolverine is, that hits everybody. So whatever opponent doesn't have a blocker, we're probably swinging at them to just do that damage to everybody. And that's what we're all about. Lizard Blades coming in here as well for one and a red for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature. Equipment Lizard's got double strike. It says equipped creature has double strike. You can also reconfigure for two. Ulvenwald Tracker is one green mana for a 1-1 one, one creature. Human Shaman has an ability. You can pay one and a green. Tap it. Target creature you control fights another target creature. So just a fight spell on a creature. Yes, please. Keep fighting Wolverine with everybody. Giggling Skitter Spike is actually pretty cool in this deck. For four mana, it is a 1-1 one, one artifact creature toy. It's got indestructible. It says whenever it attacks, blocks, or becomes the target of a spell, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. And also, you can pay five for monstrosity five, which means you just put five counters on it if it isn't monstrous. And it becomes monstrous. But with all the amount of counters we're putting on stuff, Giggling Skitter Spike is probably going to be quite up there. And every time we attack, we're just dealing that much damage to each opponent, whatever its power is. Sounds really good in this deck to me. The final creature I'm throwing in here is probably the best creature in green for card draw. That's right, it's Toski, Bearer of Secrets. Three and a green for a 1-1 one, one legendary creature squirrel. It says this spell can't be countered. It's got indestructible. It says it has to attack each combat if able. And whatever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Easy, card draw. Swing in, get cards. Let's move on to the sorcery department of our deck. We are starting with some ramp. We are green, so yes, let's ramp. Cultivate two and a green sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal them. Put one under the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle. Nature's lore. One and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for a forest card. Put that onto the battlefield and then shuffle. Does not say tapped. Go ahead and get one of your dual lands, if you will. Rampant growth is one and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land. Put that onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. Next up, we got some board wipes we're going to be talking about. One is this strictly old good red board wipe, which is Blasphemous Act. Eight and a red for a sorcery it says this spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. It deals 13 damage to each creature. So for one mana, we can say goodbye everything. And hey, dealing 13 damage, if we're lucky enough, our creatures might have enough counters where this doesn't affect us. So who knows? Chandra's Ignition is a very cool card in this deck. Three and two red for a sorcery that says target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. The thing about Wolverine is we're dealing double the amount of damage when it deals damage, which Sandra's Ignition says that creature is dealing the damage. We are dealing double the damage. So this is going to hit all of our opponents, all of our opponent's creatures. How big is Wolverine at the time we play this? Who knows? That's a board wipe. The last two sorceries are just kind of card advantage and just good stuff in general. Jessica's Will is two and a red. It says choose one. If you control your commander, when you cast a spell, you can choose both. You can add a red for each card and target opponent's hand, or you can exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Season of Gathering, four and two green. You can choose up to five paws worth of modes, and you can choose the same mode more than once. For one paw, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on creature you control. It gains vigilance and trample until end of turn. For two paws, you can choose an artifact or enchantment and destroy all permanents of the chosen type. That's just really mean. And then for three paws, you can draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Just love that card draw. Time to move to the instants in our deck. We have some removal up first. So Beast Within, two and a green for an instant. This just says destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three Green beast creature token and chaos warp for two and a red instant the owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library then reveals the top card of their library if it's a permanent card they put it onto the battlefield so see what they got get rid of their best thing these next kind of cards they're kind of combat tricks kind of pump pump effects kind of just really cool cards in this deck so we're adding embiggen embiggen is one green mana for an instant that says until end of turn target non brushwag creature gets plus one plus one for each super type card type and subtype it has if you were paying attention wolverine has legendary creature 
Mutant, Berserker, Hero. That's five. Yeah, so that's the Embiggen. It goes ahead for one mana, gives Wolverine plus five, plus five until end of turn. That's pretty mean. Ancient Animus is one and a green for an instant. This says put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control if it's legendary. Then it fights target creature and opponent controls. So yeah, a little bit of fight spell there, a little bit of a counter spell there, all in one. Psychotic Fury is one and a red for an instant. It says target multicolored creature gains double strike until end of turn and also draw a card. Moving on to a bit of protection spells. This first one, if you were lucky enough to get the Black Panther Secret Lair as well, maybe you recognize this art, but it is Heroic Intervention. One and a green for an instant. Permanence you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Legolas's Quick Reflexes for one green mana is an instant with split second. It says untap target creature. Until end of turn, it gains hexproof, reach, and whenever this creature becomes tap, it deals damage equal to its power to up to one target creature. So pretty much you're going to cast this before combat, which is weird saying from an instant. But then you're going to swing in with uh, good old-fashioned Wolverine and deal damage equal to its power to one other creature. And then it's going to get that trigger at the end step for a counter. And then it just works really well. <laughs> Snakeskin Veil, one green instant. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature control against Hexproof until end of turn. And Silk Guard for X and a green instant. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to X target creatures you control, and then auras, equipment, and modified creatures you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Here's a couple more fight-ish spells that we're throwing into the deck. Prize fight, one and a green. It says target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. You also create a treasure token. And ram through for one and a green instant. It says target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And if the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. So yeah, just uh, ram through somebody's thing because we are doing that double damage with our commander. And the final three instants we are throwing into the deck are just a bit more card draw. Hunter's Insight is two and a green for an instant. This is choose target creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker this turn, you draw that many cards. Inspiring Call for two and a green. Instant draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Those creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. And Return of the Wild Speaker for four and a green. Instant choose one. You can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-humans creatures you control. Or you can do non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. So it's a little bit of a modal spell that just allows you to go ahead and pick the best option in the moment of time. Moving on to the artifact department of this deck, we are playing with some mana rocks. Look at these first two. If you were lucky enough to get the Iron Man secret lair, this soul ring is from that one. For one mana, you can tap it, add two colorless. Earth's Mightiest Emblem is exclusive to the secret lair as well, only if you spend like 200 bucks. Uh, it is Arcane Signet, so two mana. You can tap it to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Talisman of Impulse for two mana. You can tap it to add a colorless, or you can tap it to add a red or green, and if you do, it deals one damage to you. And of course, one of my absolute favorite mana rocks that just is more than a mana rock. It's the Great Henge for seven and two green. It's a legendary artifact that says the spell cost X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. You tap it to add two green, and you gain two life. And it also says, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on it, and you draw a card. The Great Henge does it all. It's going in the deck. So our commander is all about dealing as much damage as we can, so of course I had to add some spicy equipment into this as well. So Commander's Plate, once again from the Iron Man secret layer we're throwing in here. One mana artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and has protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity. Equipped your commander for three or just equipped anything for five. Basilisk collar for one mana artifact equipment. Equipped creature has death touch and lifelink. Equipped cost of two. So when we do that double damage from our commander, we're getting double that life with Basilisk collar. Ember cleave is a powerful card. Four and two red legendary artifact equipment's got flash and says the spell cost one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. When Embercleave enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has double strike and trample, and it's got an equip cost of three. This is such a mean oops. Before you uh, go into damage step, I'm gonna 
slash and ember cleave and do so much damage to you i'm sorry power fist is coming in here as well it is one and a green for an artifact equipment it says equipped creature has trample and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player put that many plus one plus one counters on it equip cost of two that's a really good equipment for plus one plus one counter deck it is coming into this deck for that reason shadow spear very similar to basilisk collar kind of uh is one mana for legendary artifact equipment it says equipped creature gets plus one plus one has trample and lifelink as a ability where you can just pay one permanence your opponent's control lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn equipped cost of two and of course good old-fashioned swift foot boots for two mana artifact equipment equipped creature has hexproof and haste equipped cost of one did not throw lightning greaves in here because of the shroud reason and when we're trying to put counters on from something else we cannot target our own thing if it has shroud so swift foot boots is going to the deck to give our commander haste and also just a bit more protection the final artifact we're throwing in here does care about counters it's the new ozolith it's ozolith the shattered spire one in a green legendary artifact if one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on an artifact creature you control that many plus one plus one plus one counters are put on it instead it also has an ability to pay one and a green tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on target artifact or creature you control activate only a sorcery and of course if you draw this late game you didn't want it cycle it away for two mana Moving on to the enchantment department of our deck, here are some spicy enchantments that care about counters. Uh, branching Evolution, two and a green enchantment if one or more plus plus counters will be put on a creature you control twice that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. Harden Scales for one green mana if one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on a creature you control, put that many plus one plus one plus one counters put on it instead. That brand new Innkeeper's Talent is, I mentioned it in a video before, it is my new favorite plus one plus one counter enchantment. For one and a green, it's an enchantment class. It says at the beginning of combat on your turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. For one more green, you can level it up to level two. Permanents you control with counters on them have ward one. And level three, unlock it for three and a green as well. If you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. That includes loyalty counters if we leveled it up to level three. So... If any of our Planeswalkers is coming in, it comes in with double the amount of counters that they would have. These last three enchantments are just a bit of combat help. Um, we are trying to do as much damage as possible, and that's what these are doing. So Gimli's Reckless Might is three and a red for an enchantment that just says, Creatures you control have haste. I want to swing right away. Let's do it. It also has another ability that says, Whenever you attack, if creatures you control have total power, eight or greater, target attacking creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control. Once again... That fits so well in this deck. We want to fight all of our opponent's creatures. Knock them all out. Rancor, one and a green for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has trample. And then whenever Rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you just put it back in your hand. Just keep playing Rancor over and over. And of course, unnatural growth. One and four green enchantment. At the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. Gets out of hand very quickly, especially with our commander dealing double damage. It's mean. To wrap this deck up, let's go and talk about the lands. We will start with the lands that care about utility first. So Arena of Glory is a land that says it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain. You can tap it for a red or you can pay a red. Tap it. Exert Arena of Glory to add two red mana. If that mana is spent to cast on a creature spell, it gains haste until end of turn. In case you don't remember, if you exert Arena of Glory, it doesn't untap during your next untap step, but then it can untap the one after that. Um, and you can also split up those red and use one of those red on one creature and one on another creature, and they both get haste. It's very cool. Kessig Wolf Run. You can tap it for a colorless, or you can pay X, a red and a green. Tap it. Target creature gets plus X, plus zero, and gains trample intel into turn. Rogue's Passage. You can tap it for a colorless, or you can pay four. Tap it. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Scarg. The Rage Pits, you can tap it for a colorless, or you can pay a red and a green, tap it, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains trample antenna in turn. You see a theme here? We're trying to get in with as much damage as our creatures as possible. So any, any kind of stuff that just gives trample or something like that, we love. Tyrite Sanctum, you can tap it for a colorless, you can pay two, tap it, target legendary creature becomes a god in addition to his other types, and you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Or you can pay four, tap it, sacrifice Tyrite Sanctum, put an indestructible counter on target god. So, a bit of a level up mechanic on a land, uh, leveling up our creatures. So, Wolverine can now become a god, and then get indestructible. So, <laughs> that's cool. But I really care about just kind of that, uh, putting counters on different things. 
Wakandan Skyscraper. That's from the Black Panther Secret Lair. But it's Karn's Bastion. It's, uh, you can tap it for color, so you can pay four and tap it to proliferate. So just pop up all those counters, whatever ones you have on anything. Which is Clinic. Tap it for color, so you can pay two, tap it. Target commander gains lifelink until end of turn. War Room. You can tap it for a color, so you can pay three, tap it, to pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity to draw a card. And good old-fashioned Reliquary Tower, you have no maximum hand size and can tap for a colorless. Moving on to the lands that tap for colors, um, these first three obviously don't tap for any color at all, but they are fetches. You saw some creatures that care about landfall, so why not get two landfall triggers from these cards? Evolving Wilds is just... Everybody knows this. You can tap it, sacrifice it, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Fabled Passage is the upgraded version of that. You can tap it, sacrifice Fabled Passage, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Then if you control four more lands, you can untap that land. And then Wooded Foothills is even higher tier of a fetch. Uh, you can tap it, pay one life, sacrifice Wooded Foothills, search your library for a mountain or forest card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Uh, these next three are both mountain and forests that you can go and fetch with wooded foothills so cinder glade land mountain forest taps for a red or a green enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basics commercial district also taps for red or green enters the battlefield tapped always enters you surveil one stomping ground is the shock enters the battlefield tapped unless you pay two life so just uh pay that two life have access to it right away of course, we're throwing Command Tower in here. It's a land you can tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Exotic Orchard, you can tap for one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. Crag Crown Pathway is the pathway in our colors, so you can play it on the red side or the green side. It will tap for the respective color, whatever side you play it on. A Carplusion Forest is our pain land. You can tap for a color, so you can tap for a red or green, and if you do, it deals one damage to you. Rockfall Veil vale enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more other lands. You can tap it for a red or green. Rootbound Crag is the land that enters tapped unless you control a mountain or forest. You can tap for a red or green. And good old-fashioned Spire Garden is the EDH land. That's right, it's the Bond land. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you have two or more opponents. Tap for a red or green. And certainly last, but certainly not least, we are talking basics. We're adding seven forests and six mountains. And that is going to do it. That is Wolverine, best there is. What did you guys think of this? Comment down below. I'm interested to hear your guys' opinions. Um, this is a very spicy deck. I really, I don't know, like I said, when this video is coming out, but I hope I got this one because I want to build it. I want to do damage. I want to do the counter thing. Please, let's, uh, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this deck. Is there something I should have added that you would have? Maybe I missed something. I'm always interested to hear your guys' opinion. Or maybe I added something that you guys didn't like. I'm always interested to hear that as well. But uh, yeah, Wolverine, best there is. Final thoughts here. I love this card. Uh, the regenerate Wolverine just ability on the creature itself just makes it super hard to kill. Granted, most removal nowadays is probably the exile variety, so regenerating doesn't necessarily do that. But we added a lot of spicy ways in this deck to give hexproof and protection and stuff like that. So very excited about this deck. If you guys wanted to check it out, check the description for the Moxfield link. It's right there. Play test it yourself. While you're in the description, you'll find links to our TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, at Guys of Magic for each one. Uh, follow us on those. Hit the like button. If you guys haven't already hit that, what are you doing? You're missing out. Subscribe. You're missing out. <laughs> you want to see all these videos? Hit that subscribe button. And on the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. If you guys wanted to check out what they're seeing, which is not here on YouTube, check uh, the description as well for the Patreon link and consider subscribing. And until the next video, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.